hand mask it gets the job done really quickly we have low humidity and so i expect this compound mixture to dry quickly it's pro form it's the same thing that comes in this it's just in a box i don't recommend using it if you're a do-it-yourselfer because this can produce a flaky mess in your mixture. Mix it up with my mud mixer, and this is the consistency I'm using. This material, all purpose, and this material, lightweight, are the two products I've used on this job. But most of the material that I used to do this skim coat was the lightweight joint compound mixed with carpenter's glue. Okay, so. We, we are flattening out a knockdown texture. Just come close with the camera, just show them this texture. Just move, up. there you go, very good. So, your arm can reach literally from here to here, it's about five feet. If you just do half moon swoops, there is a way to do this efficiently. The idea being that you don't want to do anything more than what's necessary. So this is too thick, obviously. But just to get it on, I need to spend the time to get it at least on the wall. But let's do from this corner. I go right to the corner, pull to my left. Right to the corner, pull. Probably one of the more time-consuming aspects of the job, getting it in the corner, and then half moon scoop down. Clean off your knife. You want to see this. That means I'm filling in what's between these two highs. See that? These are highs. If we look at it like this, you don't want to build this up. There's no need to. You want to fill in between here and here. These are two highs, and you want to fill in this area. This is all lows. So your blade comes across this one and this one, filling this in. See how that works? And so if you're doing it right, what becomes white is the valley. And what stays the same color are the hills or the highs against which you're dragging this. Just show them the, uh, the scaffold. I'm on a, uh, I think the scaffold was $125. You can get, the, they're great tools. It's just a ladder and it's a great way to move from right to left, left to right without needing to get off of the ladder and move it. This is one of those ladders you would use with another person because it has wheels that lock and uh, you don't want to keep getting on and off the uh, scaffold to do that. Okay, so to rest my arm, I, I uh, discharged most of the compound onto the wall so the wall can hold the weight and not my arm. This stuff gets heavy. So balance and spread your legs because your body has to be literally ready to reach a, six, a five foot span all the way to your right, all the way to your left. It's about 60 inches. And your legs should be spread out in order to balance your body properly. ceilings. Take a little plaster, a little compound with you. 
just a little. You don't need a lot. You don't want to hit that woodwork. It's a lot of time to clean it. Please zoom in and show them. Bring them in close. Just bring them in close. So that's your first coat. You can still see the profile of the knockdown, but the second coat will render this practically flawless. A third polished coat will be all that we need for this. That's how you get rid of knockdown. No special priming needed. Just put the compound on. This has glue in it. It comes with glue in it. You can add carpenter's glue in it, which is what I did. And then you just spread it out. For those of you whose hand is hurting, if you guys are doing this, I suggest you go with an eight inch. They'll last you a nice long while. But you have to store them properly. You just can't throw them up against each other they can get nicked and then you got to sand out the scratches and for those of you whose hands can tolerate a little more this will help you get the job done quicker but it's a 10 inch and for those of you who want to use both hands i mean sometimes 
we have to do whatever we can to get the job done quicker. You just do this, two hands on the wall. So, and you use the one, the 10 inch, with your stronger hand. Let's mix some mud. So, I'll show you how dry this mixture is. Not very wet at all. Now, if you were to go put that on the wall, very, very time consuming. Why? Because it's not sticking to the wall, it's sticking to your tools. So here's what we're going to do. Take some water. This is a toilet bowl cleaner from Lowe's. Great tool not to cut your hand if you want to be washing blades. Let's see how we do. You want to grab the bucket right in between your boots? Because if you don't, it sometimes spins. Almost there. So you can see that the consistency is just like pancake batter. We have to be more exact. So we can't skip things now on this second go round. We want to be done, right? So we're going to allow more compound to get into areas where you can see the profile underneath. I'm putting it on thick. You can't see it from the camera, but I'm using a different angle on this six inch trowel. So it's a 10 degree angle. I'm keeping it very close to the wall. And all that means is I'm not taking a lot off as I go, as I make my pass, okay? Let me show you the difference. Okay, here's the difference. On the first pass, we used a 45 degree angle low. We didn't want to leave much on there. This is about a 45, I'm at a 45. Just show them the angle, please zoom in. So this is a 90 degree with the wall, that's about 45. But on this last coat here, this is the difference. I'm at a 15 degree angle. That's zero, that's about 10 to 15. And the consequence or the benefit of using lesser of an angle is simply, look, look at the difference. You can see the difference. I don't have to explain it, watch this. This is a 10 degree angle. Now watch a, watch a 45, watch this. See the difference, see how much I'm taking off? The, the, the higher angle, the 45 is the one you want to use 
on the first coat because you're using the highs of this texture to do the rest of the work. If you don't pull your blade at a 45, if you, if you uh, go lower, like a 10 degree angle, you'll leave too much. The reason why we can go with a lower angle here is because we, we've already filled in the lows. Now, we're looking to smooth it out. We're trusting our, our trowel here that it's just going to fill in the top part of what we need. If I go with a 45, I'm going to have to do a third or a fourth coat. I already think I'm going to have to do a quick third coat. But do you see, if I go with a 10 here, look how much it's... That's finished. All i got to do is sim. Okay, so that is important to know. The difference between this and this is about an hour and a half. It's the only reason why we use the bigger, the bigger tool. Less time. The angle issue is the same. If you go with a 45, you'll take too much off. This is a finishing coat even though it might have to get a polished coat after. But this is a finishing coat. You don't want to have valleys after this coat. And trust your stuff. You can do this. Anybody can do this. Believe me, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. I started doing this when I was 23 years old. I bought my first house when I was 23, and uh, believe it or not, August of 19... 1990? My first house, and I'm going to tell you where it was, 74 Veltman Avenue, Staten Island, New York, my first house. And when I was 23, I put up the ceiling in the living room. So if they have pictures on Google, I did the ceiling when I was 23 with, with my mother. My mother helped me. She held the T-square. Wonderful woman. You can't replace a woman like my mother. Now, folks, I really, I love what I do. That's, I hate to say perfection. But for the, for, the, for, the, for the guy doing it, for those, you love your work, I love mine, that's almost perfection right there, you know? And it's because of the trowel. You see, this doesn't leave marks like, like this would. Let me show you what this would do if this is, some people say, I can't get used to this. Well, guess what's gonna happen? Watch this. Watch this. Now this is from the hand of a pro, watch. I can't get rid of these lines. I can't do it. It's the tool. You see why I say it's not me, it's the tool? Okay, did I prove my point? Now you come in with this. Do you get the idea? It's the tool. It's not me. There you have it. If you continue with that boat trowel, even if you're not proficient with it, you'll render a great finish. So the top part of the screen is the second coat. The bottom part is still the first coat and you can see the big difference. Just keep going at it and you'll get there. This wall took about three hours to give it the first and second coat. And I'm very happy with the results. I decided not to do a polished coat, which is just a tweaking of the first and second coats. You can see little raised portions of the joint compound 
where my taping knife or my boat trowel lifted off, and so they're called lift-off marks. When that dries tomorrow, all I'm going to do is take my six-inch taping knife and just, I don't say scrape, because I don't want to give you the impression that you can be rough with this. Shave. It'll be hard tomorrow, but you're never scraping joint compound unless it's primed. I'm just going to take it at about a 10 degree angle with the wall and I'm going to shave it just like you would shave ice off of your windshield for those of you who know what it's like to shave ice, ice off of windshields. I hope you're happy with this final appearance. We're going to be hanging wallpaper over this after we shave it down tomorrow.